Eggnog is a holiday treat that goes back quite some time, at least several centuries. And it's still pretty special today, but for most of its history, it was considered pretty rare. There were times when eggs and dairy were much harder to acquire than they are today. Uh, they were especially challenging to store without refrigeration, and those ingredients could be just prohibitively expensive. So to a lot of people, eggnog was always kind of seen as this thing of luxury. Yeah, and it was something that people would look forward to around the holiday. Mm -hmm. It was a special thing that you would get once a year. done a lot of research through the newspaper archives and through the 1800s and up until prohibition mm -hmm. you see announcements from local pubs and lots of news articles about eggnog around the holidays and it was a much bigger deal back then yeah and in looking through all these stories of eggnog in west virginia you know we found uh, even stories of Union organizers, for instance, who would give eggnog to the local police when they anticipated a strike. And the deal was the cops would shut down the housing for the replacement workers, which are known as scabs. So as long as the eggnog kept coming, you know, the cops would crack down on the scabs, they would run them out of town, and, you know, ultimately that would help the union prevail. And I just love reading all these stories because, of course, you know, eggnog is not unique to West Virginia or Appalachia in any way. But, you know, through those stories, we see how it still can be important to people's celebrations, to their struggles, and even to their livelihoods here in the mountains. So that kind of stuff is what we look for when we talk about, you know, how, how a particular food is meaningful to a place this place and the people who live here yeah and this recipe was collected in our house by carrie blake who was the second wife of my great great grandfather bill blake and she left behind quite a few handwritten recipes mm -hmm. um including at least two eggnog recipes for the holidays yeah and we have tried those out we've played around with each of those recipes but the one we favor the one we keep coming back to is this recipe from a woman named Florence Serrato and we don't know if Carrie got this recipe from somebody in the local community or if she transcribed it from the radio because that was a thing that happened yeah a lot. she did that a lot yeah yeah but um, it's a great recipe it's a great recipe we <laughs> love it and it's you know it's very decadent it's frothy and it's rich and this particular one is like super full of liquor it's very boozy <laughs> yeah and the liquor in these recipes had a very practical and useful purpose not only did it add to the merrymaking mm -hmm, which it did it did very much um <laughs> but alcohol also tended to kill harmful bacteria in the eggs and milk um so adding alcohol was a way to preserve it and you can make a big batch and it would last today we buy pasteurized milk we have the tools to easily pasteurize eggs um, so along with an alcoholic version, we enjoy making a non-alcoholic version. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. We like it. And we might not know all that much about you know, the source of this recipe, you know, how it ended up here in this house, but we do know that it's all about indulgence, right? And in Carrie's days on this farm, uh, those were hard times. Mm -hmm. But I like to think that this eggnog brought a lot of joy to the moment. And for us and everybody else, you know, times have not been easy as of late. Um, so it's especially fun to make this recipe, you know, here in this house and think back and imagine that, you know, it always brought 
a lot of joy and a lot of happiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a good way to celebrate the holidays. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everybody. Happy holidays and welcome back to the Lost Creek Farm Kitchen. Yep, we're happy to have you back. It's been a while. It's been a long time since we made any of our featured recipe videos, but we are glad to be back today uh, for a special holiday edition with one of our favorite holiday recipes. Yeah, it's a classic eggnog and it's from my side of the family. Yeah, and it's a very fun recipe. Uh, we've really been enjoying making it and it's also pretty easy. So uh, let's get right into it. Maybe go ahead and uh, let's get started. Amy will tell us what we need ingredient wise for this recipe. Yeah, sure. So you're gonna need six eggs. Uh, you want a total of three quarter cup of uh, powdered sugar divided. You want a half a cup and then we'll add a quarter cup separately. Uh, you want one pint of heavy whipping cream, a full pint of whole milk, and then a pint of your spirit um, we'll talk more about the kinds of spirits and even a non-alcoholic version later. You want to tell them about the equipment we're going to need? Yeah, for this recipe, uh, you don't need much. Um, a few mixing bowls are good. Whisk, essential. And this is not necessarily essential, but if you have access to a stand mixer or even a hand blender kind of thing, it will save you a lot of time, a lot of work with your arms because we're gonna be beating yolks, beating egg whites, whipping cream, all that stuff. Maybe let's get started on that part of it, huh? Yeah. Um, so for these eggs, six eggs, we need to separate the yolks from the whites. We're gonna be using both of those. Now, while Amy is separating those yolks from the whites, I wanna tell you what we do to get around any issues with food safety and raw eggs, because this is a hang up that some people have with something like eggnog that calls for raw eggs. Um, you know, people are understandably worried about any kind of bad bacteria that might be in eggs that are not cooked or undercooked. So we pasteurize the eggs to make them safe, but to retain the qualities of raw eggs. So what we use is this little tool here. This is a sous vide immersion circulator. Put it in a water bath, set it to a certain temperature and it will uh, allow you to cook your food in that water bath uh, at that temperature without the risk of overcooking it. We set it at 135 degrees and we leave it in there for about an hour and 15 minutes and that ensures that we kill any harmful bacteria that might be present in those eggs and allows us to have these lovely egg yolks and whites to work with. So we use this not just for eggnog, but you know, salad dressings. Uh, we make a lot of homemade mayonnaise. Cocktails. Cocktails, you know, things that call for raw eggs. This is a perfect way to get around any concerns that are out there about food safety and raw eggs. Okay, so I've finished separating the egg whites from the egg yolks. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is beat the egg yolks until they're a nice uh, one consistency kind of um, light. They, they'll lighten in color a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to add a half a cup of confectioner's sugar and sort of cream that together. Good. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, so you ready to add the sugar? Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and add it? Well, yeah, I'll add it. All right, so I'm just adding this powdered sugar a little bit at a time as Amy's stirring it in there. And one thing I want to point out here is I have sifted this powdered sugar this morning before we got started because uh, powdered sugar can get rather clumpy on you. And that just makes it a lot harder to stir it in and maintain an even consistency. All right. So that looks very, very good to me. Looks good to you, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so. Oh, it's nice and creamy. Yeah, very creamy. And we are ready to add our other liquids, whiskey, brandy, rum. Um, I guess we don't need these so I can get those out of the way while we do this. But um, one thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that uh, there's room to play around here when it comes to this part of the recipe. Uh, this recipe in particular is a boozy recipe. It calls for one pint. Uh, essentially a third of the recipe is like straight liquor, right? So, um, which makes it really good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's strong. I like um, it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so the recipe says, uh, whiskey or brandy. Uh, it actually, the original recipe actually calls for an additional ounce of rum. Which, you know, with this much whiskey or brandy or whatever you use, that ounce of rum um, we found is virtually undetectable. So, uh, you know, um, maybe you want to, you know, play around with the mix. Also, feel free to use much less than this entire pint. Uh, or feel free to make a version that contains no alcohol at all. You know, this recipe traditionally was used with alcohol because alcohol helped preserve it. It helped extend the shelf life of eggnog. But uh, we don't have those troubles anymore in the age of refrigeration or whatnot. So um, a good alternative that we found is a tea. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually really like uh, chai tea. To me, it kind of has a lot of those same spicy sort of notes that you would look for in a rum or in a whiskey. A nice amber whiskey has sort of a sweet-ish notes to it, a little bit more depth of flavor. I found adding just like a little bit of maple syrup or sorghum syrup uh, helps bring some of those elements in, and your non-alcoholic version is pretty darn close, really, to the um, version with whiskey. Mm -hmm. So we add that pint of whatever you're using, whiskey, rum, tea. We add it slowly, and... We keep stirring this mixture constantly. Oops, spilling a little bit there. Yeah, and you want to add it slowly because this is, it needs to emulsify. The thing that the egg yolk is doing is it's making the, everything come together as one. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, that's looking really good. Looks very, very good. All right, so the next thing, we can set this aside for a second, and those egg whites that I just put right in my stand mixer, um, we're gonna start beating those with the quarter cup of confectioner's sugar that we had left over. great so our goal here with the egg whites is not to stiffen them like we're making a meringue or something like that you know we still want them to be uh, in a rather liquidy stage because we're blending it into um, this beverage mixture right so uh, we essentially want it to be like nice and frothy you can tell when it's kind of thickened up a little bit now right before we add the egg whites to this mixture we're gonna add the pint of milk and we're gonna stir that and oh, combine it. All right, and with that, we are ready to add those egg whites. Yeah, because we're going to use that same bowl here in just a second with this same stand mixer and uh, the next step is to whip some cream, make some whipped cream. Okay, so we'll go ahead and add our pint of heavy whipping cream and we will just set this on the high setting for a couple of minutes, be good to go. Oh, 
Okay. That's nice and whipped. Very good. So we're just going to add that to this bowl, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yet another element that adds nice oh. lightness and body. Now, when you're stirring this whipped cream into your eggnog mixture, you want to be sure not to do so very aggressively because we just whipped a bunch of air into that whipped cream. And if we want to maintain the consistency, uh, we want to be careful not to beat the air out of it once it gets into the liquid. So we just kind of slow it. Yeah, you want to even use this yeah. more of a fold, fold it in. And one other thing that is probably good to talk about with both egg whites and whipped cream, uh, when we're beating them to a certain consistency, we often talk about it in peak stages. So you'll hear this a lot, uh, you'll read it a lot. People will talk about soft peaks or you know, medium peaks or firm or hard or stiff peaks. Um, what we've done with this whipped cream is kind of a soft to medium peak, if you will. You know, the firm peak, you can think about it when it uh, rests, you know, it has these peaks that really stay uh, together. If we were making whipped cream for a dessert to serve with a pie or something like that, we might want to beat it stiffer to what we would call a you know, firm peak stage, a hard peak stage. But this, again, just like with the, with the egg whites, because we want to be able to integrate it into um, a liquid mixture, then this Kind of soft stage is just fine and it looks good mm -hmm. and with that i mean that's essentially the recipe right so what yeah. we can do at this point is doctor it up if we want you yeah. know or chill it and save it for later chill it and save it for later yeah one thing re we recommend if you do that is to put it in a a couple quart jars or mm -hmm. something with a lid because before you serve it it's going to kind of separate the bubbles will kind of go to the top the liquid will go to the bottom, but if you uh, put it in something that you can shake, uh, it'll mix it all back up and it'll be a nice, thick, frothy drink the way it's supposed to be yep. had. But you have a good trick for uh, putting it in a glass. I do have a trick that I love. Should we do that now? Yes. Okay, let's do that. Let's, let's make some room here. Right, so now that we have cleaned up our station a little bit and we are ready to enjoy some of our eggnog, uh, this is a perfect time to share a little tip, just a personal twist we put on this to doctor it up a little bit. Now you can add to this eggnog mixture if you want to. You can add flavorings, you can add cinnamon, nutmeg, some people add vanilla, things like that. Um, I like the recipe as it is, and I prefer to sort of create more contrast and more sort of depth to the sort of flavor experience by adding some of those flavors to the rim of a glass. You can think of it like a salted rim of a margarita glass, for instance. So we're going to do that with this eggnog, and we'll just show you that really quickly. Uh, what I use for that is I use sugar, I use cinnamon. I use a little bit of nutmeg and for yet another nice kind of pop because this is rich, this is sweet, I use a little bit of coarse salt and it just kind of adds a nice, again, another sort of depth of flavor and some nice contrast to that. So let's go ahead and we'll mix all that stuff together. And once we put those things in there, I'm just going to mix it together with a fork. And you'll probably want to play around with your amounts for this. I don't have a really precise ratio that I use because sometimes you get people who really love cinnamon or people who really don't like nutmeg or, you know, don't prefer the salt. So uh, just kind of play around with it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and prep our glass. And what we're going to do um, to get this onto the glass, I've got a little damp paper towel here. And I just rotate this glass around uh, kind of pinching it. Uh, 
I don't know, quarter inch or so. Yeah, around the uh, rim of the glass, just so you get enough of it wet. That's going to give me enough sort of moisture around the edge that all of that mixture is going to stick to it, mm -hmm. ideally. So I just put it in the dish and kind of, this part's fun, kind of crunch it around. Okay, and that looks pretty good. We're pretty much ready to enjoy our eggnog, huh? Mm -hmm. Actually, before we do that, if you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or more, you already got one of these recipe cards in the mail. Uh, we send these out every month to our supporters. Uh, this month was this holiday eggnog, actually two holiday eggnog recipes. Uh, this one and one other one that was collected here in the house. The other one's even easier. Yeah, you imagine <laughs> that. Um, but we really appreciate your support. Uh, if you're not signed up on Patreon, uh, feel free to visit the link in the description of this video. And we'd yeah. love to have you. If you sign up before the end of the year at the $10 level, we'll send you one of these. Yeah, bonus. Okay, so that's it, everybody. That is... Florence Cerrado's classic Christmas eggnog. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you make it. If you do so, please take some pictures and tag us. We would absolutely love to see what you're making at home. But again, happy holidays. Yep, here's to you and to Florence. Cheers. <laughs> happy holidays.